board on the computer. Okay. So we're up to our 16th class out of 28. And I'm going to spend a couple of minutes solving one of the homework problems, just uh, as an exercise in solving a non-homogeneous equation. And then we're going to move to chapter seven on power series, which is very important. So, um, so here we have one of the homework problems. It was solve the equation y double prime plus four y equals e to the minus x seven minus four x plus five x squared. So this is non-homogeneous because the right-hand side isn't zero. It's second order because the highest derivative is the second derivative. It's linear because it's of the form y double prime plus p of x, y prime plus q of x equals some f of x. And it has constant coefficients on the left-hand side. The coefficients are 1, 0, and 4. So we look at the associated homogeneous equation, y double prime plus 4y equals 0. We could write down the solutions, I think, at this point just by looking at it. But if not, you look at the quadratic equation, r squared plus 4 equals 0. So the roots are r squared equals minus 4. r is plus or minus 2i. So a fundamental system of solutions for the homogeneous equation is y1 equals cosine 2x and y2 equals sine 2x. So this we know from our study of homogeneous constant coefficient second order equations. And for the homogeneous equation, this is a fundamental system of solutions. So C1 cosine 2x plus C2 sine 2x is the general solution of the homogeneous equation. And y equals this plus, I write y sub p is the general solution of the inhomogeneous equation, the non-homogeneous equation. Right? So that's the equation we want to solve, where y sub p is a particular solution of this. So we need to find just one solution of this equation, the non-homogeneous equation, and then we have the general solution of it once we know the solution to the homogeneous equation. And what the book tells us is that if you have an equation of the form ay double prime plus by prime plus cy equals some e to the uh, alpha times x times g of x, so it's an exponential and g of x is a polynomial, then you look for a solution of the form. So in this case, in this case, it's one times y double prime plus zero times y prime plus four times y equals e to the minus x. So alpha is minus one and g of x is seven minus four x plus five x squared. So this equation is of this general type, and we look for a solution, a particular solution of the form some function u times e to the minus x. And in fact, we expect this function u to be a quadratic polynomial, something of the form a plus bx plus cx squared, this is quadratic, times e to the minus x. So this is what the book tells us we should try, first of all. This is the method. So all you have to do is take this 
differentiate it twice, plug it into the equation, and hope you can solve for A, B, and C. So let's try to do that. We have, we're looking for a solution Y equals A plus BX plus CX squared times E to the minus X. And if we differentiate, we get Y prime is The derivative of well, I'm trying to decide. Maybe let me just write this first as um, u e to the minus x, and then we'll figure. Then we'll solve for u. So if I write it like this, y is u y prime is u prime e to the minus x minus u e to the minus x, and the second derivative. I'm going to differentiate this again. I get u double prime e to the minus x minus u prime e to the minus x. That's the derivative of the first term minus the derivative of this, which is u prime e to the minus x minus u e to the minus x. So I get u double prime e to the minus x minus 2 u prime e to the minus x plus u e to the minus x. And remember, what is the differential equation we're trying to solve? It was y double prime plus 4y equals e to the minus x, 7 minus 4x plus 5x squared. So y double prime plus 4y, this is y double prime. y double prime is u double prime e to the minus x minus 2 u prime e to the minus x plus u e to the minus x plus 4y. This is y u e to the minus x. And when I put that together, what do I get? I get, I can factor out an e to the minus x, of course. I get u double prime minus 2u prime plus 1 plus 4 plus 5u. And we want to find a u such that this is equal to the right-hand side, e to the minus x, 7 minus 4x plus 5x squared. So the function u has to satisfy the equation u double prime minus 2u prime plus 5u is just a polynomial. And we look for u, which is also a quadratic polynomial. a plus bx plus cx squared. So if this is u, u prime is b plus 2cx, and u double prime is 2c. So if I plug that into this equation, I get u double prime minus 2u prime plus 5u. Let's see, what is all that? That's equal to 2c minus 2b plus 5a, that's the constant term. And then I have a term with x. I have minus 4c plus 5b, or 5b minus 4cx. And I have one term with cx squared. And this is supposed to equal 7 minus 4x 
plus five X squared. So if you equate coefficients, the coefficient of X squared, C is five. So we get C is equal to five. The coefficient of X, 5B minus 4C equals four. Um, let me just double check my arithmetic because I'm not convinced I did this all correctly. Um, U is A plus BX plus CX squared. U prime is B plus two CX and U double prime is two C. So U double prime minus two U prime plus four U is two C minus two times B plus two CX plus five U. So this is five A, five B and five C. And so this is equal to the constant term, 2C minus 2B plus 5A. The linear term is minus 4C plus 5B. And the quadratic term is 5CX squared. So 5C is equal to 5. So C is equal to 1. And if C is equal to one, that's nice. If you look at the linear term, five B minus four C equals minus four. So that says 5B minus 4 equals minus 4. So 5B is 0. So B is 0. And if B is 0 and C is 1, this is 2C minus 2B plus 5A is 2 plus 5A equals 7. So A equals 1. So I get my function u is a is 1, b is 0, c is 1. It's 1 plus x squared. And my particular solution for this differential equation is y sub p is e to the minus x, 1 plus x squared. So that's the particular solution. And the general solution is, again, any linear combination of the solutions to the homogeneous equation, which were cosine 2x and sine 2x. Okay, so this is an example of a non homogeneous second order equation with constant coefficients equal to something on the right hand side, which is an exponential times a polynomial. So this technique will always work for solving such equations. Okay. All right. Any questions about this? Uh, no, I want to emphasize that there is, a, I mean, you need some skill handling the algebra to solve these equations. But that's what you have to learn how to do in this course. You have to solve the equations. You don't just say nice things about them. You actually have to write down the correct solution. Um, and a lot of people on the midterm were not able to do that, and some of the grades were pretty bad. But you have to solve the equations. Right, that's, uh, uh, professor. Yes. Can you give me a favor? Can you do question nine? From the homework? Yeah. OK, let me pull it up. Chapter five, section, is this section four? Uh, give me a second. 
If there was homework from section three and section four, I believe. 5.3. Sorry? 5.3, the exercise. Oh, 5.3? Yeah. Okay. What I just did, I think, was 5.4, number yeah. five. Yeah, page 227. 227, number? Nine. Number nine. Okay. So, 5.3, number nine. The equation is x squared y double prime minus seven x y prime plus seven x plus seven y equals 13 times the square root of x. And it says, find a particular solution by the method used in example 5.3.3. So there might be several ways of doing this, but let's follow the instructions and look at example 5.3.3. So x squared minus y minus x squared y double prime minus seven x y prime and so forth. Okay, so um, I guess one way to do this is to think about it like this. Suppose we um, look for a solution, um, a particular solution, which is a power of x. Let me write it as um, maybe x to the k. So what would be a good choice for x for k for this exponent? So if y is x to the k, the first derivative is k x to the k minus one. The second derivative is k, k minus one, x to the k minus two. And if we look at x squared y double prime minus seven x, this should be a y prime, minus seven x y prime plus seven y, x squared times the second derivative is k times k minus one, x to the k, minus seven times seven x times the first derivative gives me a minus seven k x to the k plus seven times the original function is seven x to the k. So this looks like k times k minus one minus seven k plus seven all times x to the k. And this is k squared minus k minus 7k minus 8k plus 7x to the k. And I want this to be 13x to the 1 half. So I should probably choose um, actually, I said look for a y sub p is like some scale or multiple a times x to the k. So I have an A here and an A here. And so when I plug it in, I get A, A, A. It's all this times A. And I want that to be equal to 13 X to the one half. So I should clearly choose my exponent K to be a half. And then I want to so if that k is a half, a times k squared 
minus AK plus seven is A times a fourth K squared minus eight halves minus four plus seven is equal to three plus a fourth, which is 13 over four A. And I want that to be equal to 13. So I should let A equal to four. So I would get that a particular solution might be four X to the one half. And let me just see if this is a, in fact a solution. Let's check. If I take this, I differentiate it once, I get a half four X to the minus a half, which is two X to the minus a half. If I differentiate it a second time, I get two times minus a half X to the minus three halves, which is minus one. X to the minus three halves. So X squared Y double prime minus seven X Y plus seven Y is X squared times this, which is minus X to the one half minus seven X Y prime. So that's minus seven times two minus 14 X to the one half plus seven times Y that's plus 28, seven times four X to the one half. This is 28 minus 14 minus one. This is 13 X to the one half. So it checks, this is correct. So that's the solution. And I could really have started by saying, look for a solution which is equal to um, A, some constant times X to the one half, but it was nice to do it like this because it sort of explains why that choice of one half would have been good a good choice to begin with. So should I go through this again? I'm happy to. No? Okay. All right. So we're now going to start chapter seven, which is has to do with power series solutions. So it should have been the case when you took Calc two uh, near the end of the semester on the syllabus, you learn about Taylor polynomials, Taylor series, and power series more generally. So the first power series you see uh, is a geometric progression. For example, um, one plus a half plus a fourth, just take the sum of reciprocals of powers of two. And you should have learned that that actually converges, that infinite series converges to the number two. This is of the form, if you let X equal to a half, one plus X plus X squared plus X cubed plus X to the fourth and so on which using summation notation or sigma notation, this is sigma n goes from zero to infinity, x to the n. And they teach you in calculus that if x in absolute value is less than one, then this infinite series converges. What it means to converge is you take the sum, a partial sum, you take just the sum of the first, say, capital n plus one terms. So this is just a number. It's a finite number. You can add it and then take the limit of this as n goes to infinity. And this always converges if x in absolute value is less than one. 
to one over one minus X. So for example, in this case that I started with, X is a half. Right? We're looking at powers of a half. So summation one half to the N and goes from zero to infinity. A half is less than one. It's one over one minus a half, which is one over a half, which is two. That's what we got there. So we need to study power series. And the reason we need to study power series is that most differential equations, even if they look very simple, don't have a solution you can write down in terms of like the elementary functions, polynomials, trig functions, exponentials, logs, and so forth. But you can often solve the equation, find the solution as a power series. And that's what we learned to do in this chapter. So in general, a power series is an infinite series of the following form. This is sum n goes from zero to infinity, a sub n, and sometimes it's x to the n. But more generally, we write it as x minus x zero to the n. This is a power series with center at the point x naught. So you can think of this as on the number line, here's x naught. And if you take a number x, close to x naught, and you look at this difference, x minus x naught, it may happen that this infinite series converges. And it doesn't necessarily converge, it could diverge. And there really are three possibilities. So case one is the power series converges only for x equal to x naught. See, when x is equal to, let me call this something, I'll call this f of x. What is f of x naught equal to? It's summation n goes from zero to infinity, a n, x naught minus x naught to the n. But this is zero if n is greater than or equal to one. So, I mean, because this series looks like a zero plus a one x minus x naught plus a two x minus x naught squared and so forth. That's what a power series looks like. If you let x equal x naught, all of these terms disappear, you just get a naught. So a power series always converges at x naught. And that may be the only place. The other extreme case is that the power series converges For all x, for example, in Math 176, you're supposed to learn that e to the x can be written as a power series. It's 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial. Remember, n factorial is the product of the first n positive integers, x cubed over 3 factorial x to the fourth over four factorial and so on forever. It's summation, n goes from zero to infinity, one over n factorial x to the n. And this power series, this infinite series converges for all x. So that's an example of case two. And the third case is where the power series converges for x small, but not for x large. So it converges for uh, all x in absolute value less than some number r, so it converges. And diverges, diverge means not converge, and diverges to the absolute value of x greater than r. And this geometric progression we saw a moment ago is an example of that. If I take f of x equals summation, one times x to the n. This converges for absolute value of x less than one, and it diverges 
for the absolute value of x greater than one. So these are the three kinds of behavior of a power series. If you're given a power series, a basic problem is to find out where it converges. It might converge nowhere except zero. It might converge everywhere, or there might be some positive number r for which it converges for x less than r and diverges for x bigger than r. And in that case, r is called the radius of convergence. of the power series. And a basic problem, which is the first problem in the homework on this subject that I've assigned, is given a power series to find the radius of convergence. And there's several theorems about that. The, one of the basic ones is the following. So you have your power series, f of x equals summation, a sub n, x minus x naught to the n. And you can look at the ratio of successive terms, a n plus one over a n. Okay, so we assume we have a power series where a n is different from zero for n large enough. And suppose this ratio of successive terms has a limit, L, as n goes to infinity. then the radius of convergence of your power series will be one over L. So for example, if we look at the geometric series, this is just the name of the series, summation X to the N, all of the coefficients are one, A sub N equals one for all N. So a n plus one over n is one over one is one. So this limit is just a constant sequence. This limit is one. So that's L and the radius of convergence one over L is one over one or one, which is what we saw. For this geometric series, the radius of convergence is one. Suppose I take the exponential function e to the x, which is summation one over n factorial x to the n. So for this series, the nth coefficient, the coefficient of x to the n is one over n factorial. So what is n one over n plus one over, what is a n plus one over a n? It's one over n plus one factorial over one over n factorial which is n factorial over n plus one factorial, which is one over n plus one. And that goes to zero as n goes to infinity. So L is zero. So R, which is one over L is infinity. And this is, explains in part why the exponential function power series converges for all X. The radius of convergence is infinity mean converges for all X. All right, are there questions about this? So there are a lot of power series which uh, are nice to recognize. Again, the most fundamental is always the exponential function. There is the sine function. And this is a power series which only involves the odd powers of x. So you can write this as x to the 2n plus 1 
as n goes from zero to infinity. And the coefficient is minus one to the n over two n plus one factorial. So it's kind of like you take the exponential function throughout the even powers of x. So you just have odd powers of x and odd factorials and you alternate the signs, minus one to the n. Cosine of x is a sum <coughs> over the even powers of x, x to the two n. Again, there's minus one to the n over two n factorial. And these all converge for all x. The geometric series, one over one minus x is summation x to the n, n goes from zero to infinity. But this is only good for x between minus one and plus one. So these four power series, you need to know and be able to recognize. And if you have a power series, f of x, summation a sub n, x to the n, And it's always differentiable and its derivative is another power series. And this is very important. All you need to do, the derivative is just differentiate term by term. N goes from zero to infinity. A sub N, the derivative of X to the N is N X to the N minus one. Of course, when N is zero, this is zero. So you can start with one. And then you get the second derivative. This is just a power series, so you can differentiate again. n, n minus one, a n, x to the n minus two. And goes from two to infinity. Because when n is one, it's zero. And when n is zero, it's zero. And it's a theorem in analysis that not only can you differentiate these power series term by term, but when you do differentiate, the new power series has exactly the same radius of convergence as the old power series. Moreover, if a function can be represented by a power series, the representation is unique. Now, there is something which we have to learn called shifting the index of a power series. If this is your power series, the index is n. So here I have f of x, which is summation n goes from zero to infinity, a n x to the n. So this is a zero plus a one x plus a two x squared plus a three x cubed and so forth. And the derivative f prime of x is summation n goes from one to infinity, n a sub n x to the n minus one. So when n is one, I get a one. When n is two, I get two a two x. When n is three, I get three a three x squared. When n is four, I get four a four x cubed and so forth. And I would like to be able to write this as a sum of powers of x, x to the n and not x to the n minus one. So if I look at this, what is the nth term? The nth term, um, if I replace n by n plus one, I would get n plus one, a sub n plus one, x to the n, right? This coefficient, this number and this number are one less than the exponent. So I can also write this power series as summation and goes from zero to infinity, n plus one, a n plus one, x to the n. So that's an alternate representation, which is very important. And I can do the same thing with the second derivative. So here I started with f of x. 
here is the derivative. The second derivative is summation n, n minus one, a sub n, x to the n minus two. When n is two, I get two a two. When n is three, I get three times two, a three, when n is, sorry, when n is three, x. When n is four, I get four times three, a four x squared and so forth. This is exactly the same as summation. If I replace n by n plus two, I would get n plus two, n plus one, a n plus two, x to the n, n goes from zero to infinity. And again, you can check when n is zero, I get two a two. When n is one, I get three times two a three. When n is two, I get four times three a four and so forth. So this process of just we're just shifting the index to, because it's nice to write your power series always as x to the n or x minus x naught to the n. Right. So that's the rule. And I want to give an example of how this comes up in differential equations. So here's a differential equation, two minus x, y double prime plus two y equals zero. So this is a homogeneous second order equation, but it doesn't have constant coefficients and it's not clear how we can solve that. So, Let's look for a solution as a power series. That is, suppose we let y be summation a sub n x to the n and goes from zero to infinity. Can we find coefficients a n that solve this equation? Okay, so this is really something you need to pay attention to because this is the crux of what we do in this chapter. If y is equal to this, y prime is summation n a sub n x to the n minus one, y double prime is summation n n minus one a sub n x to the n minus two, and let me shift the index. So this is the same as, this is y double prime is summation and goes from zero to infinity. N plus two, N plus one, A sub N plus two, X to the N. So I have my differential equation. It's homogeneous. It's linear, but it's not easy to solve. Two minus X, Y double prime plus two Y equals zero. Suppose I look for a solution Y, summation A N X to the N. In that case, y double prime is n and minus one 
a sub n x to the n minus two. So here's what I'm trying to solve. Um, two minus x, y double prime plus two y. Let me write that as two y double prime minus x y double prime plus two y. Y double prime is this. So this is two summation n goes from two to infinity n n minus one a sub n x to the n minus two. minus x times this and goes from two to infinity and n minus one a sub n x to the n minus two plus two y which is two times summation a sub n x to the n and goes from zero to infinity so all i'm doing is i have this differential equation and I'm saying maybe I can find a solution as a power series. Here's the general power series centered at the origin, a Taylor series. It's powers of X. That's the second derivative. Plug it into this equation, I get this. And see, this is summation 2n n minus 1 a n x to the n minus 2. minus summation n goes from two to infinity n n minus one a sub n x x to the n minus two times x is x to the n minus one plus summation n goes from zero to infinity two a sub n x to the n and i want to write everything in terms of powers of x so i want to shift the index so here i want to shift n minus two going to n. So I'm replacing basically n by n plus two. So I get summation two, n plus two, n plus one, a sub n plus two, x to the n, and goes from zero to infinity. Here I'm shifting by one. So this is going to be, if I replace n by n plus one, n plus one, n, a sub n plus one x to the n, and n goes from one to infinity, plus this, which I don't have to shift. Of course, this is zero when n is zero, because I, I could make this n equals zero, just so they're all the same. So here I have three power series. And I can add power series just by collecting the powers of x to the n. Here I have two, n plus one, n plus two, n plus one, a n plus two, minus n plus one times n, a sub n plus one, plus two a sub n. I get this. Mm -hmm. And when is that equal to zero? It's equal to zero if all of these coefficients are zero. Power series is zero if and only if all of its coefficients are zero, just like a polynomial. That means that 
that what I need is that for this to always be equal to zero. That is two n plus two, n plus one a sub n plus two minus n plus one times n a sub n plus one plus two a sub n equals zero for all n. So this is a linear recursion. This says that two, n plus two, n plus one, a sub n plus one, has to be equal to n times n plus one, a sub n plus one, minus two a n. And if I divide by two, n plus one, <laughs> n plus two, I get this recursion. So if the coefficients of my power series you can choose any numbers for a0 and a1. <coughs> and then once you have an and an plus one, this formula tells you what an plus two is. So this gives us a way to solve the differential equation. Now, what we're doing is a lot of mathematics here. And you really need to invest a lot of time studying section 7.1 about power series. That's, there's no um, shortcut here to doing a lot of work. Let's look at another example. Suppose we have um, if you have a, a function y, a power series centered around one, it would be look like a sub n x minus one to the n and goes from zero to infinity. So this is a power series centered around one. So on the number line, this will converge in some open, in some interval around one. So suppose we want to express the function, you have y of this sort. Suppose you have one plus x, y double prime, plus two, x minus one squared, y prime, plus three y. So we want to insert y into this and express this, write this as a power series in x minus one. So if this is y, y prime is summation n goes from zero to infinity and a sub n, x minus one to the n minus one. And y double prime is summation n, n minus one, a sub n, x minus one to the n minus two. So <laughs> one plus x, y double prime, plus two, x minus one squared, y prime, plus three y, how can we write that as a power series in x minus one? So of course three y, this is y. 
So that's easy. Y prime, see what is two X minus one squared Y prime? This is two X minus one squared and Y prime is summation N A sub N X minus one to the N minus one. And X minus one squared times X minus one to the N minus one. This is summation N A sub N two X minus one to the n plus one plus n minus one plus two is n plus one. And what about one plus x y double prime? So of course y double prime is summation n n minus one a sub n x minus one to the n minus two. And one plus X, I'm going to be slightly sneaky. I'm going to say one plus X is two plus X minus one, right? Because two minus one is one. Because I want to have everything in terms of powers of X minus one. So from the two, I get summation and goes from two to infinity. 2n n minus 1 a sub n x minus 1 to the n minus 2 plus summation and goes from 2 to infinity n n minus 1 a sub n x minus 1 to the n minus 2 times x minus 1 is to the power n minus 1. And now I have everything as a sum of powers of n minus 1, and I can collect all the terms to get some. Somewhat complicated expression, but that's what we did. Mm -hmm. So this is power series. And really it's uh, very important to spend some time, a lot of time understanding power series. If you look at some of the homework problems in this section, which are due um, next week, I guess. Uh, like in problem 1c, you're given the infinite series summation n factorial over nine to the n, x to the n. So this is summation a n x to the n where the coefficient a n is n factorial over nine to the n. And we want a problem is to find the radius of convergence. So you look at the limit of the ratio of a n plus one over a n. What is that? a n plus one is n plus one factorial over nine to the n plus one divided by a n, which is n factorial over nine to the n. This is, if you rearrange this, n plus one factorial over n factorial, nine to the n over nine to the n plus one. n plus one factorial over n factorial is just n plus one, and nine to the n over nine to the n plus one is nine to the n. So the limit as n goes to infinity of a n plus one over a n is the limit as n goes to infinity of n plus one over nine to the n. And that's zero because the exponential grows faster than, than n. So that means the radius of convergence is infinite. Right, one over zero is infinity. Okay. All right, so 
what I strongly encourage you to do for Wednesday is to begin to study this section and start to work on the homework problems. And I'll go over more homework problems on Wednesday. But I would prefer if you can ask me uh, to work on particular problems that you found more challenging. But this is basically all of section 7.1. And hopefully, when you took Math 176 or second semester calculus, wherever you might have taken it, you did cover power series and Taylor series. So this kind of manipulation of power series is uh, not completely unfamiliar to you. That's what we're going to have to do. Okay. Questions about anything? Uh, if not, then I don't want to rush too far ahead. So we will quit for the morning. Be back on Wednesday. And I have a problem session this afternoon at one o'clock also. Okay. Bye, everyone.